Welcome back. Now, with the Trump administration, U.S.-China trade tension and Brexit, it is quite the moment to be helming the New York Times. Our former head of the BBC, Mark Thompson, he has that responsibility. I interviewed him here in Hong Kong on a variety of topics, and I started by asking him about the complicated and often combative relationship between President Trump and the Times. That certainly seems to be his, his perspective, yeah. judging, judging by, the, by the tweet. I mean, the way I think about this is the New York Times does not typically give any political party or any government an, in quotes, easy time. Actually, um, there have been very positive coverage, for example, of the track of the US economy, which mm. has been growing very steadily over this period. We've, we've covered that, I think, fairly. Um, but the truth is, I think Mr. Trump, who's not a professional politician, is simply not used to the kind of rough and tumble of, of the way the media has covered all, all presidents. And, um, you know, and in the end, I would say that, that our job, you know, although obviously we're, we're always sorry when a, a loyal subscriber like Donald Trump is, is unhappy with the coverage, our first duty is to do, do our jobs and to make sure we're covering, you know, the, the US president and his administration as we try and cover everything else without fear or favor. And the ideological divide in America, you know, between Democrats and Republicans, among Americans, it is so deep and so polarized. Should journalism take a bit of responsibility for that? Or is there an opportunity for journalism to say, this exists and we need to create a less hostile atmosphere going forward? Well, I think you'll probably know that in the last few years we've, we've been um, hiring some new columnists at the Times, including some conservative columnists. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 we hired Brett Stevens, who was a, a, a Pulitzer Prize winning Wall Street Journal opinion writer, and he's mm -hmm. now writing for the New York Times. We want to have all of the voices debating the future of, of, of the United States and, and the world in, in our pages. And in our news pages, we want to do justice to perspectives again across the spectrum. Now, I won't deny the level of polarization, but it's also trying to maintain actually a very old-fashioned idea of objectivity, that you, you go to cover a, a story, let's say a political story, let's say in particular the run-up to the 2020 election, mm -hmm. not with preconceptions in your head about what people should be thinking or even what they are thinking, but reported. And for those who say, you need Donald Trump, you need to cover Donald Trump for your subscribers, for your clicks, for your audience metrics. What do you say to them? Look, we've got an incredibly dynamic, disruptive world. Um, uh, Donald Trump and his election, in a way, is is almost a symptom of that. He's one. He's one result of polarization and disruption in the United States. Now, I I, I think we're living. Um, uh, as journalists, in some ways, we're lucky enough to be living through an astonishing period, disruptive, transitional period in world history. Mm. That's not going to stop anytime soon. As the CEO of the New York Times, as a former director general of the BBC, as a Brit, yeah. what do you make of the mess going on in the UK? <laughs> it's a, it's, um, there's a wonderful um, series of, of comic films from the 1950s and 60s called the Carry On Movies, and uh, increasingly this, this resembles one of those. But, but um, there are fundamental questions about whether the UK, which seemed until so recently to have, have thrown off its kind of problem with its past and to be looking forward-facing and thinking about the future, open for business, creative, we seem to be back in one of these periods in Britain where the, the kind of agonies about accepting our role, accepting the reality of today is very difficult for us. So, mm. so I'm afraid it's a logjam at the moment. I'd be surprised if it's solved quickly, but you never know.